Good morning everyone. So I thought I'd start this video where I left off on the last one, which was this beautiful floor that we laid. Now, <laughs> for some reason, as I've washed it all down and this has been left overnight to dry now, that colour change of the back tiles being a lot more pink has completely vanished. So now the tiles all look like they match and I'm, I'm really, really happy with that. Um, and as you can see, the grouting's all gone well. Um, and now that just looks really, really good. If you look at that from the front as a whole for an old like Victorian tiled hallway, um, I think that just looks really, really nice. So I am ordered some skirting, the first lots of skirting. I'm waiting for that to come. So there's not really a lot I can do more in that room now apart from make the second set of stairs. And as you know, I'll probably put that off for as long as I can at the minute. Um, and this bit, I still need to order this piece of MDF, um, which is going to go across here with a little door in it to, so that there's a cloakroom at the back. This bit at the front is going to be a bit of an entertaining space. And I've actually got an idea of having a fireplace on this wall here. So I've ordered some bits and today we're going to be start, well, we're going to be making the fireplace for that area. Okay, so just to give you an idea of what I'm trying to achieve, I've just drawn the um, the basement left-hand design just a little bit bigger. So the hallway that we've worked on here, where you go up the stairs and round, kitchen's going to be here and this is the basement. So we've already got this part wallpapered here. This is the window and this is going to be the cloakroom at the back. So I need a piece of MDF which is going to go across here and this will be 9 mil as well because I need to be able to fit the door. I'm going to have a door here which opens and this is going to be like the cloak room with a little vanity unit in a sink and, and a loo probably over here. And then this bit, I just want to be like a little cute entertaining space, so a little sofa. This is the bay window bit which kind of butts up to this area. I haven't done anything um, with that yet because we haven't started that part yet. Um, so yeah, something to have a think about what we'll do there. Um, but the fireplace, I want to go here. And I've just drawn a quick little design just showing you how it will be. So there's going to be some of this 6mm MDF which is going to be here. It's going to go all the way up to the, the roof as well so I need to measure that. Um, and then it's going to have two side pieces um, which go up against the wall. Um, yeah, which go back up against the wall so it's like it's almost forward if you like. Um, this is going to be this little bit here around here and then in the middle I have something already for that but I'll wait till later in the video to show you that. So I've measured up the floor to the ceiling height and it's about 249 mils um, which is just under 25 centimetres and probably about just under 10 inches, about nine and three quarter inches. So what I'm going to do is cut two two centimetre strips it's just under an inch strips out of this each um, and they're going to be for the sides and then I'll start working on the front. Okay, epic fail that was. So I basically got a little circular saw, table circular saw and I don't know if any of you have got them but they're absolutely useless. Unless you're cutting really tiny pieces of wood, um, they're just useless. The blade gets stuck, it doesn't have a guard either so I think it's quite dangerous. So I've had a little bit of a go with that, as you can see from this sawdust, on my 6mm strips. Um, and yeah, I'm having to do one side, then I'm having to do the other, and it's all wonky donkey. Yeah, it's just not worked out. So, we're on to plan B. Plan B is good old trusty balsa wood. So I have a lot of this, and I actually glued, I think this is 3 mils. And I actually glued two pieces together and two pieces like that to make a pretty sturdy piece for what was going to be a, a wall divider in another project, but I ended up doing something slightly different. So I think I'm going to use this for maybe the front and then I'm going to use these strips, which I can easily cut with a craft knife and get a very straight line for the sides. Now, because it's three mils, I know it's balsa, but because it's three mils, it should be fairly sturdy. So I'm hoping that that's going to do the trick. So uh, yeah, we'll get on with cutting those out. Oh, so this is so much, so much less stressful dealing with balsa wood. Nice, easy, clean cuts, not a problem. No power tools, nice and easy. 
Um, so here's where we've got. So I've just measured up this for the house. I've done it a few mils shorter so that it goes in nicely. And obviously we will be having coving around anyway, so that'll hide any gaps at the top. Um, and this is going to go here. So I need to cut out a space in the middle there and then I need to make some sides and then the fireplace is pretty much good to go. Okay, so that's pretty much done now. That's all the pieces cut at least. Um, I'll just show you what I've done um, just in case anybody wants to do something similar. So I've basically made this 15 centimetres wide and then the space of the roof. Now the balsa sheets come as sort of standard standard sizes so um, I had that double layer and I had a bit extra so I've just cut a bit off and made it to the height that I need so I'll glue that on there and then the sides I've just cut some two centimeter strips they will go like that and again because of the height I've just cut an extra one once I've glued this in place I'll, I'll cut that and put those on as well and for the middle all I did is found the middle and then I've done um, I've just put that on there I've drawn around the inside and then I've just gone a little bit wider um, than what I need so you can't see any of that when that fireplace is on like that. So I think the thing to do now is just to give it all a good sand and um, get it all glued together. So get this to glue together here. Um, a good tip as well is if you're ever looking, if you're ever trying to glue something with joints like this, especially a wood that's not um that's maybe a, not a strong like balsa it's a good idea to make sure the joints are always the opposite way um i'll put that there because it's got that thing at the back but just make sure it just makes it a little bit stronger if you can try and alternate where the joint pieces are and the same as these because it's at the top what i might do that spare piece is at the top what i might do is glue these on like that just to strengthen that top and then the little bit of the bottom is the, um, the spare bit that I need to cut I might put that at the bottom and again it just strengthens the whole thing so we'll get that done and glued together and um, we'll get the whole thing sanded and then we'll come back and see what we're looking at <laughs> Keep you in my heart, and my heart is where you are. I still think of you, I want you coming back. I remember when we were staring photo. Don't forget the way you look me in the eyes. And I keep you. So here it is, all finished. Pretty happy with that. Um obviously got the sides on, put the sides up here to make that a little bit more rigid. And then I've just put a couple of little extra pieces on where I think it needs extra strength. So a couple of struts across and a little bit there where those two main joints are. Um, but yeah, I think that's okay. I think that once that's dry, that'll be sturdy enough for, for what I need it to be. And then obviously that will go like that on the front. Um, what I'm going to do is brick all this with the um, Richard Stacey's brick tiles that I have. I think for the back, what I'll do is probably paint the inside of this black up to probably there. Um, and then the back, uh, because that's going to be on the wall, I, I want to put brick on. So I think I'll cut out a piece of card that's about this big and then that'll sit on the wall at the back. Um, imagine this is the house wall, that'll sit on the wall at the back and that'll just go on. And then I think, because whenever you're doing things like this, you always have to think about the way you're going to view it. And obviously this is going to be stood up on the wall and then the front of the house is here. So you're going to be viewing in. So you're going to see it sort of from that side. Um, but you are going to see the back of that. So yeah, I do want that bricked as well. So we'll wait till it's dry. We'll give it a sand and then we'll go and test it and just make sure it fits. Okay, and here it is in place. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, once that's in place with the bricks at the back there, um, I think that'll look really good. Okay, so that's everything all dry now. Um, and yeah, it, I know it's balsa, but it feels pretty sturdy, so that should be fine. Um, so what we're going to do now is paint. Um, just I've just got some black acrylic. Um, I just want to paint all this bit inside here, um, just these edges, so that if you're looking in, it just you can't see the balsa, it'll just look dark. 
um, and then the rest of it will paint the grey and then we'll do the mottled effects that we did to um, before we put the bricks on. Okay, so I've just had a little bit of a play around um, because I was thinking about a half for the fire and how I'm going to work that because I need something on the inside, I need something on the outside and then I've got this little bit it needs to go around and I'm trying to decide the best way to do it and I thought, haha, do you know what? I've still got some of those red Victorian tiles left which would be brilliant, I think, for this. So, what I thought is if I make a little design like probably best showing you the other way around actually so that you can see it like this if I have this sat on the top which would be about there and I can then have this like that and look at that it looks really good so I think that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to have to make a template I think first for um for these to sit on and also for these back ones when i was i was going to keep it so you can look all the way back but actually in the fireplaces what you have is normally it's basically like that so that the bricks there on the side and these are the columns um now i might be able to go a little bit wider but i think i do need to put something in there like where the where the brick um, the bricks will go around and then at the back and then round again rather than leaving all this empty space at the side I think normal fireplaces don't have that because these areas are like the columns the structure of the fireplace So yeah, just having a little bit of a think about how best to do that um, I mean, I'm gonna brick it all anyway And then this bit is gonna sit on top of the bricks much like the windows did because the bricks will need to go around this part anyway but yeah, I think I think I'm gonna have to put some columns in here and a, a little backboard so that I can put the brick in round, and then obviously work that with a little template for these tiles to go onto. Okay, so I've put some little struts in here, at the side, and then I've just cut a piece there, which I'm just gonna not there. Where is it? That's too short. This one. Um, which I'm just going to slide in there and again stick it to that top part there just so it's a bit more rigid. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a tile's depth and then glue it into place there. And then I can have these front ones come along here so I've not got to faff about with some little tiny pieces at the back. Um, I don't know if you can see that there. So I'm going to glue this in and then we can start thinking about making a little template um, for the bottom. Probably just use some thick card and then start getting these um, put on there. So it's probably easier if I just show you this stood up. So I'm going to make two layers of tiles which will be the hearth at the front. And then the back ones, obviously I'll need a bit of each tile to go there and in each side, but I will put think I'll centre that so it's a little bit, just makes a bit more of a pattern as well. And then all of the inside there and all of this outside bit will all be bricked up. So that's the idea. Um, I think I need to get cracking with getting this painted grey and then start doing the mottle effect which we did on um, the house. Um, just for the sort of cement bit in, in between but I think I might put a bit of more black in and, and not really any green because it's in the house it's not going to really be mossy so I might just make it grey and a little bit black where maybe the soot's caught it um, and then I need to make a little template down below there for these tiles which I'll then sand like I was doing um, for the hallway glue into place and then we can get them cemented and then we should pretty much have a full plat fireplace. So just much the same as uh, with the brickwork that we've been doing before. I've just painted it the grey as a base coat um, and then I'm going to just go over with a little sponge, a damp sponge and some of this um, black paint just to dab in a bit. I'll be a bit more black around these areas because obviously for the sort of maybe in the middle here. Um, but I don't want too much on but like I said there's no point in putting green on because it's in the house so it wouldn't have moss on or I hope it wouldn't <laughs> unless you've got a damp basement so that's giving it a mottled effect um, try to concentrate sort of the, the sooty bit if you like around where the fireplace um, is in the middle and, and up in the middle um, yeah pretty happy with that I think we just need to get some bricks on now um, see how it's looking and then obviously think about making a plinth for it as well
keep you in my heart. Well, good morning, everyone. Thought I'd give you a progress report on the fireplace, which is here. Um, and yeah, it is now finished. It did take a long time and it used up a lot of bricks. I got halfway up and I thought, why on earth did I not just do some embossed paper? Um, now I've started it like this though, I'm probably going to have to make all the fireplaces inside the same. So I'm just going to have to use the right bricks. And even though it's going to be nice because it matches the outside, it's still, it uses a lot of bricks up and it is really, really time consuming. So if you are doing this, it's probably worth getting a nice embossed paper to do the fireplaces inside rather than the bricks. But obviously it's up to you. Um, just a couple of things I did. So this is the nice side, if you like, the pretty side, because when it stood up in the house, that's sort of the side um, that you'll see here. So this has got the nice brickwork on. And this is, I'm going to show you, but this is the ugly side. So can you see that the brickwork's really, really bad? Now, the reason why it's like that is I started out at the bottom here using the corner slips to make it look a bit more brick-like. Um, and then I got halfway up and I thought, do you know what? I need to keep those corners. I have less of them. So instead, I just started to use basically normal bricks, which were which I just folded in half, which meant that I have this really ugly line, which you would never have in a brickwork because obviously that's just a, a fault line and the bricks would probably, the wall would fall apart at that. It would crack all the way down and fall apart. However, keep having to remind myself it's a doll's house. It doesn't have to be perfect. You're not going to see that side because when it's glued in, this is going to be the front. This is the only side that you'll see. So I didn't even need to put these back bricks on, but I did. Um, just in case you, you can see around the corner, but I don't think you'll be able to. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. And I'll show you, I'll show you how it will look with the fireplace on like that. Um, which would be really good. Um, so now, uh, I've left this little gap at the top, by the way, because it will have some coving on. It'll have skirting around the bottom and coving at the top. So I've just got myself a really thin piece of balsa now and the idea is I need to make a little template on the bottom there so that I can um, put those tiles on that we looked at. So I'm just going to basically stand it up there, draw around it, draw around two tiles worth on the out where it needs to be once, once I've got this on. Um, and then just make a little template and then we can look at getting some tiles stuck to the bottom get them all grouted and then we can assemble it all together. Okay, so I've cut the template. So this is the little bit which will go in the half and this, well, inside the fireplace if you like. And these are the bits that go on the outside. Um, and this bit will be sitting sort of like that basically, facing outwards. So what I'm gonna do is get these little bits sanded, glued down. I need to cut two little slithers here as well. And then I'm not worried about cutting the template until they're all on and everything's as it is. And then I'll, uh, I can obviously trim around this little front bit. And here it is, all in place. It's not obviously uh, glued as of yet because the grout is still drying there. But yeah, I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. Um, it is supposed to be looking a little bit more rustic in certain aspects of this room. And I think that fireplace, that basement fireplace with those... I want to say original Victorian tiles, although they're not, but because they match the um, hallway, I think that's just going to be a nice little um, fireplace there. So let me show you what I have for the inside of that fireplace because I have already ordered that. So let me show you what I got from Etsy because it's going to be absolutely perfect for this. It is a little fireplace, a little log burner. And you get an option of two flues. So you get the uh, little curved one and this one. I haven't decided which one I'm going to use yet. Um, and then you also get the little side panels, if I show you those. Which are there that go on like that and there's a little bit of wire I'm sure she gave me the wire you know but I can't for the life of me find it it'll be in the box upstairs with all the rest of the stuff I'll have to have a look um but basically that's the little model there um and it will obviously have opening doors and a little grate and then it has cleverly as well a little hole in the back so that I can put 
um, a fire in. Well, obviously not a fire, um, a little light through with a red flickering light. So it'll be like a little log burner. How cozy is that going to look? Um, I think that's going to look really nice in there. So we'll get these painted up black um, and then we'll see how they look after that. So we're on to the great outdoors. Now, I found this. Um, and it does say metal, but it does say on the back, primarily on metal. So we're going to give that a go on this because it's satin black, which is the exact colour I want. And because I can spray it, it'll be a lot quicker. So we'll see how that goes. So that's it. It's uh, done. That paint took really, really well. And it was much easier to spray on. So happy with how that's turned out. Now, I decided to go with the... Uh, this flue rather than the little curved flue because it was actually going up a chimney I think if you're putting it directly onto a wall Then that flue um, Would be would be better to use however I'm going to keep that because I might be able to use it for something else Maybe with the oven or, or something else or even a different project. So I'm going to keep that um, So with these little bits they haven't come with a with the um, glazing now i can't remember if she sent it to me and i've just lost it because i know she definitely sent me some wire for these bit for the hinges and i can't seem to find it um but i've got some pins so i'm going to make the hinges and then i'm probably going to get some um, acrylic put on at a later date but for now i'm just going to get the hinges put on so we can get it all assembled okay so that's all done now fully completed with the hinges on now i've put just one pin down either side what I might decide to do is actually put a pin in each and cut them down, but there's just one holding them in together now and it's just keeping everything together. Um, and as you can see, that opens up and uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. I'll show you how it looks all together. Okay, so there it is in place. I'm, I'm thrilled with how that looks. And you can see... Yeah, really happy. I need to trim that flue um, and add in. And then we need to get this back wall painted and then we can get everything glued in. I'm not going to glue the fireplace in because I do need to um, put some logs in and put a little flickering uh, bulb in there. So I'll just stand it in for now. Uh, this back wall I really need to sort out as well because it's holding up the whole project now. So uh, we will start looking at getting that sorted for the next video. But yeah, thanks for joining me. See you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.